Hi guys, so I got a question from one of my friends this week um, and it revolves around time in Excel and I've wanted to, to do a study and a video on, on time for quite, a, quite some time and, um, and I eventually got, got around to it so please stick around, we're going to be covering the, the, the theory sort of in the middle of it but firstly I just wanted to show the solution and if you want to skip forward to the solution, please follow in the chapters below. If you want to work on this workbook with me, you can find the, the download link in the description of the video below. Um, and please like, share and subscribe and, and tell me what you would like me to improve on. Tell me what, what you'd like me to cover, if there's anything that you'd like me to cover. I'm quite busy currently with quite a lot of videos and specifically I've got a, a, a video series coming around Power, Power Query and Power Pivot um, and how to work with financial data in Power Query and Power Pivot and that should be quite an interesting video with a lot to learn but firstly one of my friends sent me this question and the question basically was or he, he said that this week he set up a calendar with time slots of 15 minutes so he essentially wanted ranges from 8 a.m. to 8.15 and then in the next cell 8.15 to 8.30, etc. So he typed out everything manually and he thought, oh, it took me forever, there must be an easier way. And with Excel, with working with Excel for more than a decade now, I've realized that there's always a better and easier way. And previously, it almost, in a lot of cases, it actually involved VBA for me. These days, with the new dynamic ranges and the dynamic formulas and array formulas, um, and Power Query and those kinds of things, I tend not to be spending as much time in VBA anymore. Um, so I wanted to share the solution. Essentially, I wanted to build a little solution that enables you to change any of the any of the times um, to, to to different time frames, and it's supposed to automatically update uh, dynamically as 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 we move around. So. That's exactly what I what I built and I'm going to show you how. But firstly, I want to get to how Excel works with time. And if I take all of these time frames and I put it into the general format, you'll see that it all that, that they are all decimal values. And I built this little let's call it a model just showing how time is constructed in Excel. So if we look at time, time essentially starts well, at midnight with with a zero so the decimal for midnight is zero um, and this is also a time duration as well as a time uh, a time frame not a time frame but a but a specific point in time and um, one second is essentially what 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 it looks like and, and I mean Excel is clever enough that if I type this out if I type a double zero and a double zero and a zero one it automatically knows to format it as time. If I take it into decimal or into general format, you will always see a decimal value. Uh, Excel knows that this is time and therefore tells me that it's a misleading format. But this is just to, to, to show the examples. So one, one second in hours, in minutes and in seconds, that's what it looks like. And in order to jump from the decimal time I can multiply by 24 to convert them into hours, by 24 and then by 60 to convert them into minutes, and then by 24, by 60, and again by 60 to convert them into seconds. So we can actually see that one second correlates to one second, one minute correlates to 60 seconds or one minute, one hour, 60 minutes or one hour, and then one day to 24 hours. And wonderfully, one one full decimal value is one day or 24 hours and that's also how that also leads into into dates excel works with dates as whole numbers so you would see that today's date for instance if i if i put today's date down you'll see that it's 44809 so and what that means is it's 44809 days from if I put this into a date format, the year 1900, the, not the 1st of Jan, but 1, the value 1, 
is the 1st of Jan in the year 1900. And that's how Excel works with, with dates. So dates is a whole number and the decimals is time. And if you know that, you can actually work with dates. So let's cover all the formulas that you find in dates. You, find, you can find the now formula, which is a date and time stamp and how to actually put that in a cell. You can go control and then semicolon to put in a, 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 a day or today. Um, and then if I take control shift and semicolon, that puts down a, a specific uh, date stamp. And if I format this exactly in the same way, then I will get to today's date and current time. Right, so, but the now formula is an actual, um, it's an actual formula that, that, that updates automatically. And um, they call it a, um, I can't think of the word now. It's, it's, a, it's a formula. I'll put it in the description while I'm talking. But essentially, now is one of those formulas. And then you find the time formula. So the time formula essentially gives you the ability to build time based off of hours. So, oh, sorry, hour, minute, and second. So I can use the hours, the minutes, and the second, or the hour, minute, and second um, formulas to extract the exact hour, minute, and second of a specific time frame. Or I can actually rebuild a full time by building in elements of time back into the time with the with the time form format so i can i can actually use string or text values and build time from that so those are those are the formulas that you find as part of the time you get the now formula which is the current date titan timestamp the time formula gives you the ability to rebuild time from string values or text hour minute and second extracts the hour, minutes, and seconds from what they call a serial. Um, I think that is what it's called. Let me just make sure. Um, so it's a serial number. And what that means is it's essentially looking for a decimal number or a number that correlates to a date and time stamp. So if we actually take the current date and time and I take that into decimals, you'll see that it's essentially got 0 0.92. Um, sorry, that's just time. But, but it means that that is the exact decimal value of my current, my current timestamp. If I take the date and the time and I put that into general, you'll see it's 44,809.92203. And that dates or that time serial back, back into the hour, minute and seconds would extract the exact hour, minute and second of the current date stamp. Then if I look at the text formula, and the text formula is essentially what, what I use to, to build back into, into my example, the text formula gives me the ability to, to format a value, any value into a text uh, type of format. And you'll see that the, the, um, the, the actual text um, formula looks like this. Um, so I can actually tell it exact hour, minutes and seconds. I can swap this around, I can give it the exact um, format that I wanted to. So, so I can actually, I can actually give my, my formula, I can take away the, the, the seconds, for instance, I can add dashes in between if I wanted to, for, for whatever reason, um, that form, that format I can determine with the text formula, which is, which is quite powerful and quite handy. And then finally, we've, we've got what we call the time value. The time value takes a string or a text value and converts that into time. So what I'm doing with this is I'm taking this, which is essentially a text value, and I think it's formatted as text as well. No, it's not. But if let's say it was formatted as a text value, then the time value extracts the time from that text value. And that, according to me, is all the formulas or are all the formulas that you can get or that, that exists around the, the, the time time itself in Excel. So if you understand what's on this page, you understand time and how it works in Excel. So let's take that now back into uh, into my, my, my example. So the example essentially pivots off of sequence and then text. So firstly, I just want to build out the sequence of of time. And because I know that it's decimal values now, I can use my sequence formula and the number of rows would essentially be 
the time difference between the end time, the start time, and divided by the duration, because that's how many 15 minute, how many 15 minute time slots exist between 11 p.m. and 8 a.m. in the morning. So I'm just going to say end time less my start time and divide that by the duration. And that will give me the exact number of time stamps that the sequence function would need to spill into rows, which is the first parameter. Secondly, I don't want any columns, so I'm just going to skip over columns. Then I want you to start at 8 a.m. And I want it to step by 15 minute intervals. And that would essentially build out all of all of my 15 minute time frames or time yeah, time um, points in time throughout these, uh, these 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 this many hours. So it'll go up until 22:45. So just for interest's sake, I typed like I said, I typed this out into Excel. Excel automatically formatted it as time, and even the duration. If I take that back into decimals, I wouldn't be able to remember that. I just typed zero zero. Um, what is that, a colon um, 15 and then pressed enter and Excel automatically formatted it as time. So then, then I want to essentially use, and, and I mean, this is a spilled range, this is dynamic and I want this to be dynamic as well. So I'm going to refer to this spilled range by referring to B7 hash and I'm going to add to that spill range that 15 minutes every time. And that would have essentially build out my end times and it will end at 2300. So finally, I want to build a range from that. So I'm just going to use the text formula and I'm going to say, I want the text from that. I want you to format this into hours and minutes. And then in between my end and start date, oh, yeah, end and start time, I just want to, I want to use the ampersand, which is the concatenate um, I can use the concatenate formula as well, but um, I'm just going to use ampersand and I'm going to add a dash or a space dash space and close my, my, my brackets, oh, my, my, my parentheses or double quotes um, because that de denotes a, a text input and I'm going, to, um, I'm going to add an ampersand to that and then close out the end time in the same fashion. And that would um, that would essentially build out my time range. And again, I want this to be dynamic. So how do I do that? I would refer to the the, the hash reference over here, and that would spill out my complete range of times. This is now completely dynamic. If I take it from 9 a.m. or 10 a.m. in the morning, it will start at 10. If I take it up to 12 or let's say, let's say 12, um, it will actually end at 12. If I take it into 45 minutes, 45 minute, um, 45 minute gaps, it'll, it'll do the same. Um, and it's completely dynamic. So this enables you to, to quickly build out a string of, of time and date frames. And, and if you, if you actually if you actually use this, this you can use it for, in a VLOOKUP um, and you can actually, um, yeah, there's many things that you can do with it. So it's completely dynamic. It's a nice way to, to, to build out a, a, a time, uh, well, multiple time ranges. So that, that's the example that I wanted to share with you. Um, I hope you, hope you enjoy it. I hope you enjoyed this example. It's an easy little example, but I, I hope you learned something from it. If you have, please like, share, subscribe. Um, and uh, like I said, um, in, the, in, the, in the description, you can find this document, but you can also find a link to a Google form where you can submit ideas to me or upcoming videos. You can ask me questions. Um, I'm very responsive on the comments as well. And, and on social media, please, please, uh, please reach out to me and I'd like to hear from you. Um, thanks for taking the time. Have a good one. Cheers.